So with the kit, you're gonna get your hardware. There'll also be some washers. You've got two pieces of nine inch and one of six inch of three quarter inch rod. Two nine inch long pieces of one inch pipe. The main plate that has the back plate and the arms, all the accessories, your top carrier, and arm supports plates. This is the whole kit. First thing you need to do are remove these four arm supports from this carrier plate. This guy gets broken up into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces by cutting all these little sprues. The back plate, the arms come off, the rest of the plate stays itself. You need to separate all the pieces in the accessory plate as well as removing the arm holders from the carrier. You can do that with a vertical band saw, you could use a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade, use a grinder, you can fatigue most of the pieces apart, or you could just wish and pray. Here's what you get at the end. Back plate, arms, all the miscellaneous pieces here, your carrier, your crusher, and arm holders. Now there's going to be some little nubs left over where all those sprues were. Go ahead and grind all those off, flap this easy. If you're doing this with a grinder and you got a guard on it, if you rest this up against the edge of the guard, kind of gives you a leverage point, makes it more controllable. All right, so with that done, put everything off to the side except for the back plate. And these four eye bar looking things. What are you gonna do with these? is in pairs. Your back plate, the, the side with all the extra crap on it, is the bottom. You're going to take your little eye bar things, set them in the slots here, and just lean them against each other. Don't worry about getting them perfect just yet. Now you're going to grab your welder, and what we're going to do is get these to sit, you know, dead even. Make a nice little triangle right here. Put a tack on the very ends. You can do it on the top face here, but it's better on the ends. Now you guys might be catching on what we're doing. Effectively, we're making a linear rail. We're going to take the 9 inch piece of 3 quarter inch rod, set that right on top of both of them. Just do a nice little tack right from the end to start with. Next we've got to bend up the crusher. If you're uncomfortable doing this or you're worried about it, you can always score through the edge of the plate at these bend lines. That'll make it bend easier. I'm not worried about it. Put the piece in a vise. You don't even have to hold down tightly. We're not gonna bend. See, I'm holding it. We're not gonna bend this one yet. We'll bend this one first. They may both start to bend, that's okay. So we're just trying to get close. You don't have to stress about being perfect yet. Put a bend on this little tongue while you're at it. When you start your bends at a vise, it's gonna be easier to finish them up by hand later because you've weakened this steel. So we're gonna continue until these two plates are parallel to each other and this back plate's at a 90. You should just be able to do this by hand. Once one angle has met a 90 and you like it, put two tacks along here on the outside. So that, that angle is locked up pretty well now. Okay, so with those two tacks in to lock everything into a real nice 90, you want these two parallel. You want 90 degrees, 90 degrees. You know, adjust as you see fit. Mine's pretty much right there. And we're gonna use the tongue to lock that down. We'll bend the tongue to whatever angle it needs to be. 
feel free to just hit it. Yeah, that's where I like it, right there. We're gonna weld that out. This is one of the few pieces that we're actually gonna weld out early on in the process. Everything else gets welded once your fitment's perfect, but this guy, as long as those two are parallel, you're good. Now we're gonna cut a V into the pipe. When you look at your pipe, you're gonna see that there's a weld seam. See it right there? We wanna cut the weld seam out. So I'm gonna put the weld seam straight up and I'm only lightly snugging the pipe up in the vise here. It doesn't take too much. There you go, open it up. Like I said, don't clamp too hard. That pipe's gonna wanna grab your grinder disc and that's not gonna be good. The amount of the V isn't critical, about 90 degrees of the circumference of the So now we've just cut our pieces. There's an interior burr from the grinder. You can take a flap disc. And we'll gently run down through there, put this in a vise, whatever, however you want to safely. Or you can put this onto a piece here and just kind of slide it back and forth and it'll break most of that burr out enough that we can continue. All right, now we've got our crusher piece. The big flat open face faces down. If you've got spatter, this is the time to turn that off. All right. What we're gonna do is take our two opened pipe sections, measure up from the bottom four and a half inches, Make yourself a mark. Those marks are where the bottom face of your can crusher needs to line up with. You'll see that there's only about a tenth of an inch tolerance inside of here. This needs to be a relatively tight fit. And you want to make sure that your pipes are sitting evenly on the three quarter inch rod runners. You know, you don't want them skewed to the left or to the right. So with that all positioned nicely, you want the pipe to be even with the bottom of the rod on both sides. You want those marks lined up. We're just going to put in a good tack right here and right here to just hold the two together for the time being. Check that everything fits, slides well. It's going to be a little bit rough in the beginning, especially with these burrs on the inside of the runners. Don't be afraid to clean them out if you feel the need to, or just operate the thing until they break off. So now that we're at the point where this is in and it operate, you know, it moves smoothly, we're now gonna tack the linear rail pieces to the back plate. Just four points on each one, four small tacks, and in case we need to go back and adjust it. Push down on the can crusher part just to hold it in place, hold everything in place. Everything's just getting tacked together in case at some point in here the mechanism binds up and stops moving. If it ever does, you need to back up, figure out what bound up, and fix it. I've got a little spot right there. And what it is, is my carrier is hitting spatter on my back plate. So I'm going to take the whole assembly off and clean that back plate out. Something else that may help you, this Weld Clean 350 Anti-Spatter Spray, it's from CRC. I'll have a link in the description. This stuff's great. It's water-based. It's like a soap, soapy water kind of, uh, but it's water-based. So it doesn't smell. If you guys have tried the aerosols, they, they really mess with your head, at least mine. So this is much better for me. Okay, next step is we need to weld on a bolt. These are quarter 20 inch long. It's gonna go on the side of these two pipe sections in line with the bottom of the carrier, coming out 90 degrees 
flat to the table, parallel to the back plate, however you want to say it. So get a tack in on both of, on both sides of this and then adjust these until they sit nice and level where you want them. Yo, make sure that they're in line with each other and the bottom of this plate, weld those out. All right, now pretty much as always after each step, Make sure that everything still operates smoothly. It does, it's really nice. Okay, now we're gonna put in these two little carrier pieces that hold the arms. It's just like this, run a bolt all the way through. So with the kit, you're gonna get six lock nuts, one regular nut. The regular nut's there for this step. You know, thread it relatively tight, back it off a turn or so. You can take these two little arms, they've got ledges on them, or divots, whatever you want to call them. And you drop them into the holes here. Loosen everything up until they start to fit real nice. Adjust as needed, tack them into place. Only tacking at this point. Make sure your arm swings totally free and then just weld these out at, right away at this point. There you go. Take your two linkages, last two bolts you have. Open these arms up. Make sure your carriage is in place. The head of the bolt goes on the inside of the body of the crusher goes here, slides right onto there. The kit's gonna have a plastic washer that you put in the middle of this joint here. Don't worry. You want every nut on here to be tight and then back it off a quarter to a half a turn. Now what we have is the basic assembly. We've got these two arms. They're loose, kind of sloppy. That's okay. Make sure that this thing moves through the entire range of motion that you're expecting. Make sure nothing's binding up. Nothing's hitting where it shouldn't hit. Now we move on to the bottom piece. That's this guy. You're just gonna bend it like that. It's got two sets of tabs. They drop into these two holes. Before you weld anything out, run this mechanism down. Make sure they're sitting pretty good, right there. Put those up, we're gonna tack right here. Oh! Run your carriage so it's more or less standing straight up. If you've introduced any error in here, one of these arms is going to have a little bit more play than the other, more than likely. It's probably that your bolts here are not in the right spot. It's not really the end of the world. You're about to see why. We're going to take the two of these and attach them together. You get this one bar. It's a little bit oversized. You get to cut it to whatever you want. I need to take about a half inch off this. If somebody were to put these arms together in the wrong order on the wrong side, these would be splayed out a little bit more. That's why we send the bar oversized so we don't get complaints. All right, put this in place. Just one tack to hold it together for now. With just that single tack in there. Check how this operates. You can see that the handle is gonna come to rest right at the tongue of the carrier. I probably made this a little bit smaller than I should have. About another quarter inch would have been better. It's a little tight right here, but not so bad that anything binds. You'll also notice that right about the same point that these bolts hit the rails, the handle hits the tongue. That's on purpose. Now that we're happy with the operation, everything's nice and smooth. 
Yeah. We're going to weld everything out. Using the weld clean, perfect time. Spray down this back area again. Start welding. So everything on the face is welded where it needs to be. I've got a little bit of a sticky spot right about there. And I believe what's happening is this carriage is grinding on the back plate a little bit. Probably got some spatter in there, I just can't find it. You could take it apart, figure out what's bound up, clean it all up, or you also have the option of just using the thing for a little while. It's gonna wear in, it's not gonna be a problem anymore. That's the option I'm gonna take. Now, flip everything over. And you wanna weld all of these back pieces down. This is really gonna lock everything together as a final product. Okay guys, so what I need to know from you is what part of the assembly was difficult, what any suggestions you might have. Try not to redesign this in your head. I know everybody's gonna have their own way coming at it, but these kits have to be optimized not only to cut out of the table cleanly, but also to ship. This is that optimization. I'm looking for tweaks more than design suggestions. No offense. Yeah. Boom. Now I'd also like to know how you guys mount this to the wall. There's really only two spots here and here at the bottom and here and here at the top to drill holes. I can't really find anywhere else to put holes without it getting in the way of this carriage. That may be a suggestion is that this entire carriage get made smaller. That would work. All right, two other things I need to know. Do you think mounting holes should be drilled into or cut into this plate from the table? And two, what would you guys pay for this kit? That's a big one for me. I wanna know your opinions before you guys know the numbers on what it costs me to make one of these, ship it, credit card processing, all of that. Tell me yours. I'm not even gonna suggest what I think the price needs to be on these. Thank you.